God, we come before you in Jesus' name, thanking you for this day that you have made. We just declare over it that this is the day that you have made. You've created it and uh, you have uh, purposed in it, God, to meet us, to uh, you know, continue to work with us, God, in all of our process, all of that, taking us from glory to glory, strength to strength, God. And so uh, you've appointed even these moments together in your word to help us move forward. And so I pray for my friends, God, I pray for myself that uh, we would encounter you, Father God, and uh, your word, it's truth, and that truth would transform us from the inside out. I just remind you of Proverbs chapter 4, verses uh, 20 through 23, which say uh, these words, my son, my daughter, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Hey, Jonathan. Thanks, man. Appreciate the encouragement. Broski. Um, so Romans chapter 12. So we have just turned a corner. We have been in uh, Romans 9 through 11, which is Paul's uh, focus on his people, uh, the Jewish people, 9 through 11. And so now we're kind of turning to some more like real world, practical, you know, okay, live the Christian life kind of matters starting in chapter 12. So let's read. Verse 1, I appeal to you, therefore, says the Apostle Paul, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God. And notice his, what, you know, what his appeal is based upon. It's based upon the mercy that we have received in Jesus Christ. I mean, it all begins and ends there. Remember we were saying, you know, if we just, be, if, if all we have on our Thanksgiving list is Jesus, oh my gosh. That, that overshadows so much, that covers so much of our lives. So by the mercy, plural, that we have received. You know, the scripture says uh, in, in uh, Ecclesiastes, right, is, isn't it? That, you know, the mercies of God are made new every day. So every day there's mercy being attended into our lives. Okay, so here we are. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay, so several things. So, hey, out of that, those, those um, mercies, because of those mercies, the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Okay, so he's using the picture of the Old Testament, Old Covenant, um, you know, sacrificial system. And he's saying, instead of like killing this animal, just consider yourself to be a living sacrifice. So the day-to-day the -day life that we live is meant to be a picture of that sacrifice, except that we are alive, right? Holy, which just means set apart. Right? It means set apart for God, acceptable to God. Remember, we are acceptable to God because of the sin sacrifice of Jesus, which is your spiritual worship. Okay, this is your spiritual worship. Um, and and th that, that is literally your reasonable service. The word, the word worship is la truo. Okay, and it means service. It's, it's just reasonable. It's, it's rational. It's, it's, it just makes sense that we would receive the mercy of God and the mercies of God, and we would present ourselves as a living, set-apart um, sacrifice for Jesus, and it would be a reasonable thing to do. It's the most reasonable thing to do. Verse 3, do not be conformed to this world, but instead be transformed by the renewal of your mind. A few words to unpack there. Do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. That, that word has, it's, it's related to a Greek word uh, that, is, that is soon. S-U-N. It's pronounced soon. 
and it means with or together. So what it's saying is, okay, instead of just being um, formed or, or shaped together with the spirit of the age, that's what this word world means, by the way. It's not talking about the cosmos, like the creation. It's talking about the age, the, the age in which we live. So don't be shaped by the things that constitute the spirit and the flavor of this age but instead be transformed. The word there is the word we get, we get metamorphosis from the word metamorpho, okay? Metamorpho, right? We get our word metamorphosis. What does it mean? It means instead of being with the, the spirit of the age, we are to encounter this renewal of our mind that causes us to be changed. Right from the literally from the inside out, because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about our mind, right? From the inside out. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God. This word testing is like the word um, examination. So, so th th it's kind of a series of things happening here. Okay, so one, we're saying, no, don't be shaped by the spirit of the age, instead, be be shaped by the, the, be changed, if you might, by a renewal, a renovation of our mind, so that by examination, that's what testing there is meaning, by scrutinizing the things that are coming into like our minds and hearts, we may be able to discern what is the will of God. And he, he describes, just in case we're like, oh, what, what do you mean by the will of God? What he's saying is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. End of verse 2. All right? See how that trajectory is? Let me say it again. So instead of being formed or shaped together with the spirit of the age, okay, we're to reject that on the daily, right? And that's, that's kind of really where the living sacrifice, the set-apartness for God comes into being. We're, we are to reject being shaped by the spirit of the age that we currently live in, okay? But instead, we are to be metamorphosized. We are to be transformed from the inside out by the renewal, the renovation of our mind, our thinking, so that we can properly examine, we can properly scrutinize the things that are coming into our lives so that we may be able to discern, we may be able to discern what is the will of God. And what is that? What is the will of God? It is that which is good, that which is acceptable, that which is perfect. Amen. Can you guys hear me okay? If you're watching with me right now, could you just let me know if you're hearing me okay? All right, um, so continuing on, verse 3. For by the grace given to me, so grace has been given to the apostle Paul. We could, you could think about that as in, empowerment, the, the, the endorsement of God. So God has given the apostle Paul his endorsement, right? For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So listen, hey, we, we, you know, as we've gone through the book of Romans, you know, there's been some like theological con constructs, you know, nine through 11, we were talking about Israel. We were talking about the sovereignty of God and as a, a something that we, we want to make sure is a part of our understanding of the world that uh, we live in. And before that, we were talking about the gospel. What is the gospel? Um, you know, the, the, the reality that in the face of the bad news, that is sin separating us from God, he has given good news, which is that he sent his son Jesus as the perfect sacrifice for our sins, right? Okay, so a, a lot of, a lot of uh, theology there. And when I say theology, all I mean is that knowledge about God, right? Um, and what would, it's not that Romans 12 is less theological, it just is very much theology in practice. Very much theology in practice. So he's saying, I have been endorsed by God 
All right, I have God's endorsement. And so I'm saying to you on that basis, every one of you, one, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Just as, as a practical man. All right? And, 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 but, but to think with sober judgment. That just means that, you know, it's not, it, just be in reality. Be in reality about yourself. Let, let me be in reality about how I see myself. Okay? So each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. It just, that just means, so it's kind of connected to the, the whole idea of, you know, looking at myself in reality in, with, with sober judgment. It just means this, that God has made you who you are. He has made me who I am. And the Apostle Paul is about to encourage us. He's starting to encourage us that be who you are. Be who God has made you to be. Okay? Be in reality about that. Be in a, a soberness about that. So that's what that, according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Verse 4, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So, right? He's just saying analogy, like our bodies. Here are my fingers. Okay? Here's my hand. Here's my wrist. Okay? Here's my nose. Here are my ears. Right? Okay, all of those things have diff a different function. Okay? So, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so in the same way, in the same way, verse 5, so we, though many, are one body in Christ. So he's just, just relating the, the parallel, the analogy is just like our body has many members, and they each have a different function, so the same in the body of Christ, there are many members and different functions. And he's about to enter into what these functions are. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given us. That's the same thing as the measure of faith. Again, that is to say that God has made us who we are. That's why, hey, you know, um, I, I, my friend, um, um, you know, I, I'll just, a friend of mine, you know, said to me, you know, by way of encouragement, hey, you know, too often, like in the Christian world, we are participating as well in the, um, if you might, the glorification of people. And so we end up chasing other people's callings and other people's gifts and other people's the way that God has shaped them almost as if that's the thing to be to to pursue and what the apostle Paul is saying is hey listen McConnella you know Jonathan um Susie Bob you have been fearfully and wonderfully made by me and I have placed you in the body of Christ with a unique shape. And I want you to be who I have made you to be. Function the way that I have made you to function. Okay? So you don't need to chase somebody else's, you know, whatever you might think. Oh my gosh, I need to be like so and so. Fill in the blank, right? Fill in the blank. Yes, I can honor what God does through other people. Obviously, that's a good thing to do. In fact, we're going to read that word later on here. But, but there's a difference between that, where we honor the gifts that God has placed in people and the ways that those gifts impact our lives. There's a difference between that and chasing someone else's uh, gifts, callings, etc. We have been uniquely placed in the body of Christ. And his encouragement to us is, hey, be who I have created you to be, right? In fact, the encouragement is, hey, even as we're thinking, man, I wish I had this, or I wish I could do that, I wish I could da 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 da, and and some and we, as we're thinking that, we're missing the very things, the very strengths, the very gifts that God has given us. God has given us unique gifts. So He says, verse six, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, 
Let us use them. Those are four very important words. Let us use them. Those gifts that God has placed in your life, the most important thing isn't, oh man, I wish I had this gift, but didn't have this gift. Could I have that? Can I? The most important thing is we recognize what God has put in, in our lives and then we use them. We deploy them to be a blessing to other people. Let us use them. So if prophecy in proportion to our faith, again, that is the, that is that, that, that phrase that's AKA the measure of our faith, uh, the grace given to us. Okay. That those are all saying the same thing. Okay. So in proportion to our faith, verse seven, in, in, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So let us use them. That's what he's saying as he identifies these specific gifts. According to the way that God has made you and I, let us use the gifts that he has given them. So the, the again, it's less important Oh, man, I wish I had that gift. It's less important about chasing that. And it's more important about recognizing how has God shaped me? What has God placed in my life? Let me deploy it in the body of Christ and for the blessing of the world around me, the people around me. Okay? The people around you and I need us to recognize the way God has shaped us and function in that way. Does that make sense? All right. So, verse 9. Let love be genuine. So he is about to hit us up with these. It's like Paul, Paul had like a machine gun moment, right? And so starting at verse 9 through the end of this chapter through verse 21, he's just, he's just firing off some exhortations to us. He's just firing off. So, so he starts with, let love be genuine. The word is anupokritos. We get our word hypocritical from that word. It's, 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 it's the opposite of being hypocritical. In fact, it, it's, it's interesting. It's a word that means undisassembled. <laughs> I don't even know if that's an English word. Undisassembled. Right? Uh, I, I guess it is. Okay? It means undisassembled. It just means that our, our love is not fragmented. It's not in part. It's not feigned. It's, it's not pre pretense, right? It's real. It's, it's something that is genuine, right? Authentic. So let our love be authentic, okay? Abhor what is evil. So that means, okay, reject what is evil. And, and listen, it's interesting that the object here um, is not people, right? Okay, so people do evil things, okay? So it, when they do, we're like, okay, that's evil, okay? But the people, the people, remember, we, you know, we can't divorce what we're reading right now from all that we've read prior to this, okay? The reality is that everybody presents a spotty resume before God. Everybody, every single person on the earth who has ever lived presents a resume to God that is, you know, mixed, at best, the reality is that what God in his perfection, because God is perfect, in his perfection requires is perfection. So, so a spotty resume, hey, I got some good, I've got some bad, you know, I got more good and bad, right? Though we may think that the reality is we've got just a mixture of things that's just all bad, quite frankly. Okay, and that's why we need the mercy and grace of God. That's why the basis upon which we are made right with God is not our spotty resume. It is the resume of Jesus Christ that we receive by faith his resume into our lives. Does that make sense? Okay, so what I was starting to say is that we're not to abhor people. We are to abhor the evil, yes. Right? But we're not to abhor people because that is not the heart of God. The heart of God is he loves people. John chapter 3, verse 16. It's like the most popular verse. For God so loved the world. Right? Um, the, the, the ethnos, the world, the people. Right? He loved the people. And so what did he do? 
while those people were still yet sinners. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, right? He didn't wait for them to get their lives straight. You know, okay, why don't you turn your lives around and then I'll come back. No, he just, he sent his son, Jesus, while we were still yet sinners. Okay? All right, so hold fast to what is good. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. That's the other half of 9. Verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Care for one another, right? And that's what that's saying. Outdo one another in showing honor. This is what I was referring to. So it's one thing to, to honor someone else in terms of what God is doing through their lives. That is very appropriate. In fact, we need more of that. We need more of that. It says, outdo one another. You know what? <laughs> we have so many competitions in the body of Christ. You know, we got churches, we got people competing about this or that. Oh, I do this better than you. I did, did, did. You know what? Let, hey, listen, we, we, do you want something to compete about? Do we want something to compete about? Here's what the Apostle Paul says. Hey, outdo one another in the way that you show honor to people. Outdo, like, like compete on that. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Apostle Paul, man, he just goes right for it, right? He just goes right for it, you know. Cut out, basically, he's like, hey, listen, cut out that foolishness. Let me tell you what you want to compete over, okay? Honor. That's what you want to compete over. <laughs> All right, verse 11. Do not be slothful in zeal. It's interesting. This is, uh, you know, you've you, you got opposites here. Slothful, you know, you got the sloth, so that's on the slow side. Zeal, literally, um, it, it's the word spude. It literally is the word speed. We get our word speed, English word speed from this Greek word spude. Not be, do not be slothful in zeal um, and uh, having to do with eagerness, earnestness, uh, busyness, this diligence, right? Don't be slothful in that. Be fervent in the spirit. Be fervent in the spirit. Man, we could camp out here for a minute or two, but, you know, Jesus said to the disciples as he was on his way back to the Father, he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send another helper like me. I'm going to send another helper, the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit. So the life that we live in Christ, okay, the life that we live on the daily, we, we started to talk about this at the beginning of Romans 12, that life was not meant to be an unassisted life. Like, hey, go figure it out on your own. Good luck with that. No, Jesus was like, I am going to send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. And so when we read in the scripture about this person, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, um, we are reading about Jesus' um, Jesus promise that he would not leave us alone. That's why we want to be in dynamic relationship with the Holy Spirit. I encourage you. I encourage you that wherever you may be in your life, uh, you know, maybe this is the first time you're ever hearing about this Holy Spirit person, or maybe you, you've heard this before. So wherever you are, you can get closer, right? You can get closer in your relationship with him. So be fervent, be fervent, passionate in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Listen to verse 12. I, I, you know, I just felt like verse 12 is the order of the day. It is the order of the day. Listen to verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Can we do that? Is there anything in the way of government orders, sickness, illness, or whatever that prevents us from doing those three things? Listen. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Man, that, that just, it's like the Holy Spirit is just challenging me. Maconula, Maconula. Like you don't need, you don't need stuff to be going right in order for that to happen. 
This transfers regardless of the circumstance or situation. Again, whatever the state of things is. Verse 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. I just, I just sense the Holy Spirit putting like, speaking of being, being in partnership and relationship with the Holy Spirit, I, I just sense the Holy Spirit. Hey, Daniel Dressler, thanks for joining. I just sense the Holy Spirit saying, Makanula, this is the order of the day. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. Have we got some tribulation going on? Do we? Yeah, be patient in tribulation and, and also be constant in prayer. Be constant in prayer. Be, let's believe God that he has power to do something about the things we talk to him about. So we should be talking to him about the eradication of COVID. We should be talking to him about uh, the, the, the stirring up the, of, our, of our communities in terms of just from in every way, in every way, the relational, the financial, the fiscal, the, we should be talking to him because those are things that are pressing up against us, right? So be constant in prayer. We should be talking to him about the, the, the moving of the gospel, the good news. What are the opportunities for the gospel? What are the opportunities for the gospel, the good news about Jesus? We should be talking to him about that. All those things can happen right now. Okay, verse 13, contribute to the needs of the saints. Seek to show hospitality. That's connected to our brotherly affection, right? Our doing ourselves and showing honor to one another, right? Caring for other people, all right? Caring for other people. Verse 14, here's some, here's some tough words. But hey, it's in the Bible. It's there. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Ye rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty or arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. You know, uh, when we were reading, uh, when we were in the Gospels, this, this came so powerfully to me. When, you know, you, you're looking at what Jesus, not just the words that Jesus said, not just the teachings, but the way he lived, and it was so upside down. It was so upside down. Even amongst the religious leaders of the day, right? The Pharisees, Sadducees, etc. So many of them were pursuing a, a, a status out there. And, and Jesus is just, just totally just cuts across that to say, what, what does it matter that you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? What, what does it matter? Right? So he just turns everything on his side. And, and so Paul is drinking at that well as he's talking to us in verse 14. So bless those who persecute you. What, I mean, what's the natural human reaction to people who persecute you, to the people who treat you badly or seek to put you down, you know, because of, you know, who you are, maybe because of your faith and life in Jesus. Okay, what is our natural reaction? Is our natural reaction to bless them? No, it's, uh, we bless them in a different kind of way, right? Um, but what the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, listen, so we are being called to live in an upside down way, in a different way than everybody else. I don't have to tell you about, you know, just the, 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 the bombs that have been lobbed against, you know, each other, people of, of various things, whether it's political uh, um, affiliations or, you know, philosophical affiliations, this or that or the other. And, and man, we are just chewing up each other just continually. And, you know, I just wonder what would happen if instead of that, we blessed people. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Live in harmony. Come on, people of God. Live in harmony with one another. 
Do not be haughty. Do not be arrogant. Do not act like if I could if I could put it in my own words. Don't don't act like you know everything. Sometimes we feel like I mean, there's a lot that God has told us, and then there's some other things that it's like I'm not. This is not. I'm not talking about that. You know. And so we know in part, right? We know in part. That's what First Corinthians thirteen says we know in part the things that we know and uh, you know we, so sometimes we can stand to be like let me just hold this thing loosely not not like the the, the tenets of christianity obviously the, the deep truths about jesus etc but there are a bunch of other things that we'd be like eh, you know at the very least we could say what i am intending to do is to live in harmony with others okay and then, in fact we're going to read another scripture that pertains to that a little later on here in another verse. Um, okay, never be wise in your own sight. <laughs> I love this line. I love this line. Hey, listen, don't, you know, if you're going to be wise, let that come as the observation of others. Not like you're trumpeting of it. Like, I am, I am totally wise. I, I am a wise person. <laughs> I am totally, I am full of wisdom. No, like, let, never be wise in your own sight. Let that be something that other people observe and, and copy out of your life because you are following Jesus. You're not pursuing, you know, their estimation, kind of like, and we talk about the Pharisees, etc., that were pursuing the people's estimation, high estimation of them. So they were doing things that they were like, oh, if I do this thing, then the people will think highly of me. Right? And he's saying, hey, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Just pursue Jesus. And if it's something worthy of being copied, people will copy it. People will come alongside. All right? I don't have to be wise in my own sight and, you know, put my banners out there. Repay no one evil for evil. This is verse 17. The gift thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Remember that? Outdo the competition. Here's the competition that we have. Outdo one another in showing honor to each other. That's, that's the only competition that we should be having in the body of Christ. Um, if possible, so far as it depends on you, listen, live peaceably with all. Right? That's kind of, if you might, that's continuing the thought of live in harmony with one another. Live, you know, if possible. Okay? If, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. You see that word all there? That's all. That's all people. That's people who don't believe the same as you, don't do the same as you, don't think the same way as you. They don't, you know, if possible, live peaceably with people who might be the exact opposite of where you're coming from, of what you value, of what I value. Man, that is such a, it's a challenge, right? It is a challenge. I'm, I'm not saying it's not a challenge. It is a challenge. It is a challenge. It's a very difficult thing to do. You know, because we, we often are equating people with the things that they believe. It's like, man, you believe that, but you are a terrible person. You are terrible. You are a horrible person. You, 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 do, you think like that? Oh, my gosh, you're terrible. You know, and, and so what's the possible is saying, hey, listen, if possible, live peaceably with, with, with all people. Let's find ways to do that by the grace of God. This is why, by the way, coming back to, hey, listen, this Christian life, it's not meant to be lived like, it's not like, hey, good luck with that. No, it's meant to be lived in partnership with God. We got to say, God, help me, please. Because if you leave me to myself, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be casting stones. I'm going to be like, oh, this person and that person and this one and this one persecuted me. And, oh, I'm going to get them back. You know, that's what we would do, right? So we need to say, God, please help me. Please help me. Help me to live out this Christ life. Help me. Verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. You know, coming back to the blessed those who persecute you, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, because God is the perfect, he's just, he's just, right? So leave it to God, vengeance is mine. I, if there's something to be repaid, like leave it to God, leave it to God. He is perfect, he doesn't get emotional tantrums, he doesn't lose his mind, he's not like, oh my gosh, I, I, 
I, I just lost my mind. No, that doesn't happen with God, right? So leave it to him. That happens with us. It happens with me, you know. Uh, my family will testify that, Dad, Dad, you just lost your mind there. What, what, what happened? Right? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, to the contrary. So instead of that, okay, so Paul is like, man, he is not going to leave alone on this. Instead of that, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. In other words, hey, listen, the, that person who doesn't think like you or doesn't agree with you, doesn't has a different way of you know, analyzing the world and its systems and et cetera, et cetera, that person is going to encounter that what, what they need, what they need, like what you need, like what everybody needs, is an encounter with God. This, this heaping, burning coals on his head is not, <laughs> it's not literally like, we're going to put burning coals, something's putting burning coals, it's not literally that. It's, it's, aka, they will encounter God. Let's leave them to God. Let's say, God, you know what, God, would you touch this person's life? And, and it might be that, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, there may be some things that you still disagree about because, they, you know, it, because it's not, it's not really, it's not that important. It's not that important. <laughs> Can you believe that? That there's some things we're like, oh my gosh, it's so important. God's like, yeah, not, not so important. You know what's important? Love. Brotherly affection. That's what's important. You know what's important? The gospel. People encountering Jesus. That's important. People's lives being transformed and being brought into freedom by the gospel. That's important. <laughs> oh my gosh. So listen to so verse 21. Verse 21. Just to cap it off here. Do not be overcome by evil. Listen, there is evil around. There is evil. It's present. COVID. I mean, that's one aspect of evil. That's one manifestation. That's what say. Of evil. What it was it what it has done in our lives. You know, the, the, the losses, the from people's lives being lost to family members and families being impacted to just you know, just look at it. Look look at look at all the impact. It is pure evil, it's it's out of the of the kingdom of darkness. Right? So that's why verse 12 rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Be constant in prayer. Be saying, God, I pray over this land and this world and this, this evil that is, that is COVID and all of, its, all of its connections. I just pray against it in Jesus' name. Yes, there are things, there are ways in which God has redeemed and is redeeming, um, you know, like he does with anything, right? This is God. He is able to take something that's like, oh my gosh, that's the worst possible thing that could happen. And he... Holds good out of it. This is God. Okay? But that doesn't take away from the fact that the thing is evil. Right? So while we are yet pulling out of this season all the good that God wants to do in our lives, the ways he wants to draw us to him. Listen, if we draw closer to Jesus as a result of, you know, being pressured by the things that are out in the world, that's good. That's good. Right? Right? It doesn't take away from the fact that the things that are happening are evil, but it, 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 it says that's God. God is able to take things that are like that and he's able to redeem them in our lives in such a way to draw us closer to him, to, you know, to, if you might, manifest, you know, fruit and power and miracle power, etc. And so we are, you know, our posture is to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. I think I've said that a few dozen times now. So, listen, verse 21, let me say, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Ah, I, I just, I, you know, I feel weight in those words. I feel weight. Do not be overcome by evil. Okay, so let's not just throw our hands up in the air and be like, well, I guess, I guess it is what it is. No, 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 because we are to rejoice in hope. We are to rejoice in hope and we are to be patient in tribulation as God is working and we are to be constant in prayer. 
We are to give him no rest. Luke 18, 1. If you haven't gotten a chance to read that parable recently, it says that Jesus told this parable to the disciples so that they would always pray and never give up. Man, I want that Holy Spirit. I want that kind of posture that I would pray and never give up. That whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, I'm thinking there's some things you know, some people that are going through some things, some friends of mine that are going through some things. Man, I, I want to, in by the power of God, by the presence of God, by the Spirit of God, I want to be that one that is like, you know what? I am not giving up. I am, I, it's in the grace of God that I'm saying, hey, I'm not going to be overcome by evil, but instead I'm going to do what this verse says, the second half, but overcome evil with good. My my submission to you is that the way that that happens is not a, a self-energized thing. It's a God-energized thing. So what we must do is we must say, God, help us. God, we're with you. God, we're with you. Right? So, um, hey, Carrie, Thanks for joining. And uh, so, hey, listen. So we are at a pause. We're at uh, verse 21 of, uh, of chapter 12. We are going to pick up uh, verse uh, chapter 13. And uh, 13's got some doozies in it, you know, so I'm just preparing you right now. It's got, you know, it's got, you know, just like we just were challenged in some things in, in chapter 12. You know, the apostle Paul is like, I got something else for you. All right. So something to look forward to next week. Lord willing, we will gather together. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus name, I am praying now for all of us as we look at some of these practical implications of the gospel in our lives, right? The practical implications of the gospel in our lives, like how are we, how is the, the, the gospel, the gospel engine in our lives, what is it creating out of our lives, out of our mouths, out of our words, out of our actions, out of our attitudes? How, what is it creating in our relationships with each other? What is it creating, especially in those places where we, we think differently, or we see things differently, or we, we, we philosophize differently, or we vote differently? What, what happens in those spaces, God? And so we ask you to help us to outdo one another in showing honor, God. We ask, us, ask you to help us to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. To, you know, bless those who persecute us and, and bless and don't curse them, but rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And over, over all of that, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Help us to take that kind of posture as those that are being redeemed in Christ. So thank you, God. We just bless you. We honor you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.